Ain't nothing like hip hop music. Turtles seem to have high calcium requirements. Studies from 2005 indicate that they require unusually high quantities for normal shell and skeletal development. In part, this is probably due to the extensive amount of extra bone they grow to their shells. But females also need extra amounts of calcium when forming eggs and growing egg shells. And it seems that they recognize that bone is a valuable calcium source. They're not only nibble on bones, but they will also eat bone fragments out of dried scat belonging to big cats and other carnivores. In 1994, Eskew and Peters determined that turtles are persistent and determined to eat bones that capture their interest, sometimes returning to eat or gnaw at a bone just seconds after the observing human had moved them away. In contrast, the same study proved they tend not to immediately return to the plants that they've been taken from. A fact which suggests that bone is a specially valuable resource that needs to be taken advantage of as quickly as possible. Furthermore, tortoises are sometimes so keen to ingest calcium that they'll swallow stones and even take mouthfuls of calcium-rich soil. The ingestion of stone and bones is pretty neat. But perhaps even more interesting is the mining behavior also practiced by some species of tortoises. In 1985, Marlowe and Tullestrup described how members of some desert tortoise populations deliberately mine and eat specific layers of soil at key locations that they visit regularly. Surprisingly, even desert environments often have extremely large snail populations, and it's not unusual to find literally hundreds of excavating snails per square meter and thousands of particles of broken snail shell in the same area. Tortoises have been absorbed, observed to seek these out and consume them. They provide a concentrated, readily absorbed source of this vital mineral. In most captive situations, the gross calcium content of the diet rarely, if ever, approaches that of the wild diet. And such is true for the calcium to phosphorus ratio. Some examples are Plantago, which has a calcium phosphorus ratio of 20 to 1, and Optunias, that have a ratio that could be high as 78 to 1. The typical diets adopted by many keepers, based upon commercial salads and fruit, often contain little calcium and an excessive of phosphorus. We must be careful because many plants appear to have positive calcium phosphorus ratios, but often contain chemicals that inhibit calcium take-up. Mustard greens, turnip greens, kale, cabbage, bok choy, spinach, chard, collard greens all fall into this category. One of the most best exam examples of this anti-nutrient factor is oxalic acid. Another is fictic acid, found in high concentrations in peas and beans. It is important to select diets not only for gross calcium content and calcium to phosphorus ratio, but also to screen them to exclude reliance upon plants that contain high levels of these anti-nutrient nutrient plants. In practice, this is fairly difficult to achieve on an all-year-round basis. According to a recent review of calcium preparations, there are at least a dozen common calcium preparations and hundreds of different formulas available on the market. As a general rule, calcium carbonate is a preferred source for use of routine supplement. Cuddle bone is a long-standing method of providing extra calcium to tortoises. Cuddle bone is a long-standing method of providing extra calcium to tortoises. The main chemical constitutes of cuddle bone are calcium carbonate, sodium chloride, calcium phosphorus, magnesium salts, and an abundance of microtrace elements. Despite its high gross calcium content, cuddle bone is relatively poorly absorbed, and so it should not be relied on as a sole source of calcium. 
On balance, the safest and most effective calcium supplements for routine use with captive tortoises would appear to be calcium carbonate-based phosphorus-free brown calcium powder with or without vitamin D. You can add thistle and dandelions naturally to your current diet, as well as sprinkle the commercial calcium powder. We suggest you feed Missouri. It is if, if your tortoise does not enjoy the brand, you can moisten the food and mix it with your regular feed. Eventually your tortoise will make the switch. They all do. If you will stay tuned for tomorrow's video, we will show you how we do this because there is not a single tortoise here at Crazy Critters that does not eat Missouri and rep cow. But we have a new tortoise named Daisy, so we will drop in the GoPro and see what happens. Stay tuned for that. Come on, baby. Thank you. Eat. In part, this is partially. In part, this is probably. Let's see. Don't bite me. Don't. Sir, you are mean. Mm. Mm. Oh, you're just a bite.